Hi there. We're going to continue uh, detailing the hand and finally blending the fingers. As you know, I have chosen one of the Michelangelo's artworks, Creation of Adam or uh, God's Touch. So every now and then I'm observing the reference on my end. So if you're going to start subdividing the model as is by default with Smooth On, it will just create a bunch of sausage fingers. And this is not what actually fingers are. If you have a closer look on your, at your own fingers, you'll notice that the at the top they're mostly squarish, whereas more towards the bottom they have more fat, but still they're not really round. So it's much easier to actually make them squarer to begin with and just shave off uh, some unnecessary corners, uh, whereas to do it in reverse if you had some sausages to begin with, and trying to add sharp corners. So to do that, essentially untick the smooth and then subdivide uh, once or twice. I do it just once. And then uh, tick the smooth back on and subdivide from then on. I picked up this method ages ago from one of the uh, Scott Eaton's courses. I really liked it and sort of uh, kept using it from then on. So the next step is I'm gonna use the uh, clay tubes to shave off the unnecessary squariness. And as much as it looks fun, I'll probably uh, speed up the process for you guys. <laughs> Just touching on the hypothena eminence and the thinner eminence just a little bit at this stage i'll definitely come back to it and the fun continues just going around each finger and uh, shaving off a little bit Just indicating the knuckles at this stage. Also, I uh, want to make sure that I maintain this arch so that my uh, pinky side is the lowest. What I have just etched in there is the transition between the fifth uh, metacarpal and the hypothenar eminence that we see from the back side of the hand. And I'll be coming back to this spot every now and then. So rotating the thumb is a bit tricky. You need to create a custom mask for it. And here I am sort of attempting to do it. I'm a little bit failing at that. So I think in the end I'll just use a combination of um, transpose uh, mask as well as just the move brush. The interesting thing to note is that the thumb in its relaxed position, as you may notice, rotated roughly uh, at around uh, 30 to even 45 degrees. And this is what I'm doing right now, making sure that I give some rotation to the thumb. Here I've noticed that my thumb is actually uh, a little bit short. If you were to put your thumb close to the index finger, you will notice that it reaches 
roughly two-thirds of the uh, first phalanx of the index finger. I'm finally starting to actually bend my fingers and I'm starting with the pinky finger. So I isolated using the poly groups and then just remove the bottom uh, bunch of polys. And if I were to include it, it would just make my knuckle travel a lot. But because I removed it, it made my mask much smoother. And hence, it's just uh, the knuckle becomes rounder. It is quite important where you position your pivot point. If you put it sort of right on the edge, then your knuckle is really sharp. If you put it in a little bit, then your knuckle pops out, which sometimes can be helpful. In my case, though, it kind of moved quite a lot, so I have to massage it with the move brush. Now, because the fifth metacarpal is quite flexible compared to ring, middle, and index fingers, when you bend your pinky finger, it actually travels forward. So this is what I'm adjusting as well. When you naturally bend your pinky finger, you will notice that it's actually looking towards the center of the palm rather than just being straight. Also wanted to mention that when you're rotating the fingers, it is best to do it in the autographic view. So switch off your perspective view. Here I am adjusting the shift of the fifth metacarpal uh, because I have bent my uh, pinky finger. What I would like to show you is what's going to happen if I try to rotate my uh, finger at level two versus level three. Uh, but first actually let me try and adjust my transpose mask, which is under preferences, transpose, a mask blur strength. The default was at 24. I switched it to 7. So if you draw, draw on the mask at level 2 and try to rotate your finger, you can see that it actually bulges out in my first uh, phalanx, which is not what I want. But if I switch to level 3, redraw the mask and try again, you can see that my knuckle is really sharp. So this is why I do the base rotation of the finger uh, at level 2 because I don't want the geometry to compress a lot. But all the subsequent rotations, what I'm doing right now, I do at level three. It looks like my last phalanx of the pinky finger is a bit short, so I'm gonna adjust that in a moment. But also what you'll see me doing is readjusting the uh, inside crease uh, because it's actually not in straight line with the knuckles on the back side of the hand. And on and on it goes. So we'll just continue to do the same process for the rest of the fingers. So as you can see, I'm doing the base uh, rotation of the finger at level two, and then switch to level three to do all other rotations. And also double checking from the top view uh, whether uh, my rotation of the finger is correct. I don't want it to be too far inside, but it needs to have a little bit of rotation. The middle finger is the most straight, 
So when you rotate it, make sure that it's looking straight. You'll notice I generally draw the mask just past the loop. It generally gives me a nice sharp knuckle. Give the last phalanx of the thumb a slight rotation as well. And when you sculpt and give the shape to your thumb, just observe it on your own hand because it's quite a different shape to all other fingers. Throughout the whole process, you will notice me not actually going to higher level of subdivision just because uh, the foundation is so important and I don't see any point to lay the creases and the muscles on the wrong shape and form. So stay as low and as long as you can to make sure that the form and the shape is right. So what you'll see me doing here is making sure that my base finger loop is my actual crease because after I have bent all my fingers I have the natural creases that appeared but because they're lower than my um, base finger loop it actually makes the proportions on my fingers wrong. So I'm essentially I'm just re-establishing my crease. And also if you remember me saying that our mesh is going to be our guide. So this is where it really helps us. Just adding some uh, skin pull and bulging out. Again, re-establishing my creases. Here goes the first uh, palm crease. A small trick that I did uh, after I sculpted some more, uh, because I'm not in the detailing stage at, right now, I decided I would go in into the deformation and run polish a few times. It just smoothed out the mesh. After I have observed my hand pose a little bit closer, I noticed that my thumb should be a little bit lower and rotated more. Slight skin pull from, from the thumb to index finger. I don't think I have changed anything in here. So 
subtle adjustments uh, to the wrist and uh, back of the palm. And we're finalizing this chapter and we're soon going to jump in into detailing. Thank you and see you in the next chapter.